Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher. And in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain to you the differences between a plain taper attachment on the lathe and a telescopic taper attachment. And those terms are usually thrown around pretty loosely without anybody really understanding uh, what they mean. And it probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference to you on your smaller lathe because whatever you got, you got, and there's nothing you can do about it other than to buy a new lathe or a larger lathe. So let's take a look at what these terms mean, and I'll show you some examples of each. But I do not intend to cut any tapers in this video because I have several videos on that. In fact, I'll show you here in just a second the names of some of the other videos if you want to go back and see me cut tapers using the taper attachment method. Here are five different videos that are available on YouTube where I'm actually using the taper attachment to cut a taper. So you can search for those if you haven't already seen them. Now for those of you that have either purchased my video shop courses or have watched them on Vimeo, these are the chapters in each one of the courses that deal with a taper attachment. There are three methods of turning tapers on the lathe. Number one, the compound rest method. Number two, the offset tailstock method. And number three, the taper attachment method. Many of you will not have a taper attachment and are confined to using methods one or two. But in this video, I'm talking strictly about the taper attachment. This is a picture out of a South Bend book of a plain taper attachment. From a distance it doesn't look a whole lot different from the telescopic taper attachment. And this is a South Bend picture of a telescopic taper attachment. As you can see, not a whole lot of difference in appearance. So let me explain the differences. Now I am going to show you a South Bend 10 inch lathe with a telescopic taper attachment. I do not have a South Bend lathe with a plain taper attachment so I will be showing you a plain taper attachment on the Logan lathe which would be very similar to what the Atlas lathe looks like. This is my Logan Powercraft 10 inch lathe and you've seen it in countless videos but it is equipped with a plain taper attachment. It did not come with the machine when I bought it, but uh, was given to me by another person who shall remain nameless at this time. But let's talk a little bit about this plain one, and uh, then we'll step out in the garage and take a look at the more complicated telescopic type on the South Bend. This taper attachment could be installed or removed in a matter of 30 seconds, really, just by unclamping the bolts on each end and taking this bolt out and this whole unit here, this whole bar, can be set aside until it is needed. This taper attachment as well as the one on the Atlas lathe pivots on one end rather than in the middle. Cheaper to make and uh, simpler really in design but these were fairly inexpensive compared to the type that you would find on a South Bend lathe really designed uh, to be affordable by the homeowner. Henry's come a-visiting and you're gonna check out these drawers. How you doing? How old are you now, Henry? Four. You're four. You like these tools? They'll all be yours someday, won't they? Look at me. What's in that drawer? Oh, all kinds of cutting tools. They're sharp, aren't they? The biggest disadvantage of the plain taper attachment is that you must remove this screw and that will disconnect the brass nut from the cross slide. So we take this out and usually we put a piece of tape over this so that chips can't fall in there. Now let's take a look at it from another angle. But since we remove that screw, the cross slide is going to move in and out totally free of this hand wheel. So this is disconnected and we must then tighten this binding bolt right here 
and all of our feeding is going to have to be done with the compound so we loosen up the compound and bring that in to the zero position lock it and do all of our depth of cut with the compound rather than the cross slide and that all has to be reversed of course when you uh, want to disengage the uh, taper attachment so again this would have to be tightened and we also would make our adjustment here as to the angle one degree two degree or whatever you want now I'm not going to actually do that but remember a taper attachment is doing nothing more than tracing the angle that this bar is set at so a taper attachment is a tracing attachment all right that's a plain taper attachment let's go out in the garage and look at the south bend this is the south bend parts list for a nine inch lathe and this particular page is for the taper attachment a plain taper attachment for model a b and c the 10 inch k would be very similar you can see it's relatively simple because now i'm going to show you one for the 10 inch heavy and larger lathes that is telescopic so you can see this is the taper attachment for the 10 inch heavy and up it is more complicated there's more pieces it definitely would cost more to make but it is better in some ways now that's the cross feed screw and this tube here is the part the telescopes and that's where they get the name telescopic taper attachment and here's a view of the telescopic taper attachment on the south bend assembled and there's the tube that I just talked about that is the telescope or is telescopic again this is south bend look at the difference between the cross feed screw with a taper attachment as opposed to without it's quite a bit longer and this plain section here on the end that does not have a thread on it is the part that telescopes in and out of the tubular portion that I just showed you so there's quite a few differences in the construction of the machine here we are at the South Bend 10 inch now and this is a telescopic taper attachment you can see there's a clamp here and a binding clamp right here and that the bar swivels or pivots in the center rather than off to one end very simple to use now in order to use this taper attachment there's only about three things you have to do and you do not need to remove the screw right here that's what makes it so nice but to start with you go ahead and set the bar here for whatever angle you want and one end can be set in degrees and the other end would have graduations for taper in inches per foot so that would be set using this bolt and a similar one on the other end then I would tighten this binding lever that already was tight and tighten the clamp here that secures the whole thing to the bed and now it's ready to use the compound can be left in whatever position you want and it's kind of irrelevant for that matter but in order to take uh, or increase the depth of cut you again need to loosen that lever and you can turn in uh, your cross feet or whatever the depth might be and then lock this and then as we feed the carriage the angle here is being traced by the uh, the casting that is clamped around it and that is a dovetail much more expensive to make than a straight one like you might see on the Atlas or the Logan or other more inexpensive lathes I removed the washer and the clamping lever there so perhaps you can see down in the slot for telescopic action now there should be a sheet metal cover over this to keep chips out and that is missing I need to make one 
So that is the differences between a plane and a telescopic taper attachment. Hopefully you can see the advantages of one over the other, but I think all high-end lathes like a Monarch or the real expensive lathes are going to have the telescopic type. And you can see the dovetail right here. Hope that clarifies things for you if you have any interest in this. Thanks for watching. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.